the respiratory acidosis is a primary acid based disorder in which the arterial carbon dioxide rises to an abnormally high level which can happen because of three mechanisms one the presence of excessive carbon dioxide in the inspired gas as happens in high altitude or those who have trapped in enclosed uh, rooms and elevators during a fire accident or any such thing decreased alveolar ventilation that happens in neuromuscular failure or increased production of carbon dioxide by the body as happens in low cardiac output states the causes of respiratory acidosis like we saw in metabolic can happen because of a decreased respiratory drive they can happen because of a decreased chest wall movements they can happen because of toxicity or equipment problems or due to obstructive pulmonary disease so the respiratory drive can be reduced by a cerebrovascular accident a cns tumor which is suppressing the respiratory center infections like encephalitis drugs like opioids and sedatives like benzodiazepines can all depress the respiratory drive and cause the co2 to go up the chest wall movement can be impaired by neurological problems like neuromuscular diseases again barre for example a myasthenia gravis for example or a demyelinating disorder for example or tetanus where the neuromuscular junction is affected sometimes muscle relaxants which are given probably uh, out of proportion to the patient's body weight could cause uh, neuromuscular failure or organophosphate poisoning and opioids similarly any trauma to the chest surgery chest wall deformities tension pneumothorax pleural effusions or upper airway obstruction can limit the ventilation to the chest and decrease alveolar ventilation resulting in an increase in the circulating carbon dioxide in the blood we all know that copd can produce an increased carbon dioxide retention the consequences of this just as we saw that the metabolic acidosis triggers a respiratory compensation a respiratory uh, disease can trigger a metabolic compensation however when the co2 goes up the first thing to react is still the respiratory system so there is an increased respiratory stimulus which is maximum at 65 mm mercury of carbon dioxide which increases the work of breathing but because of the high co2 on room air because of the the gas equation being constant the oxygen levels will fall so these patients end up being hypoxemic the oxygen dissociation curve shifts to the right and with a chronically raised carbon dioxide there is a decrease in the 2 3 dpg which brings the odc back to the left at the cardiovascular level an increase in the circulating levels of carbon dioxide will increase the sympathetic tone and peripheral vasodilatation just as what happened in metabolic acidosis the blood pressure increases and there could be a prolongation of the qt interval because of an increase in carbon dioxide. neurologically there could be cerebral vasodilatation the reason and an increase in intracranial pressure which is the reason why most copd patients will end up having headaches cns depression and a decreased level of consciousness which will ultimately result in a lowering of the seizure threshold metabolically there is the kidneys will react by retaining carb bicarbonate so there is an increase in bicarbonate as a compensation and there may be a hypochloremia as a uh, compensatory phenomena so the rules of compensation for metabolic acidosis are very simple that means if you just apply the 1 and 1/2 plus 8 rule you would get the rule of compensation that's because there is nothing called as a chronic metabolic acidosis the respiratory system responds nearly instantaneously to any changes in the metabolic milieu however the kidneys would generally take time to respond to any change in the carbon dioxide up to 48 hours so there is a scope for an acute respiratory acidosis and a chronic respiratory acidosis so for acute respiratory acidosis for every 10 mm increase in the carbon dioxide the ph will decrease by 0.08 that means if the co2 is 60 so 7.40 if you take it as the baseline ph 60 minus 40 into 0.08 so you get 20 so 0.16 so see the the ph should be around 0.7.24 as a rule of compensation for every 10 mm increase in the carbon dioxide for acute respiratory acidosis 
the bicarbonate will rise by 1 millimole, one millimole per liter in acute respiratory acidosis. So in the first 48 hours of the onset of a respiratory acidosis, the pH, the, the bicarb will rise by 1 millimole for every 10 millimeters increase in carbon dioxide. And this is called as the 1 for 10 rule. So if you have somebody who has a CO2 of 60, the expected bicarbonate is equal to 24 plus 60 minus 40 is for 20, uh, 20, 20 by 10 is 2. So 20 plus 2 is 26. So this patient is expected to have a bicarb of 26. On the other hand, if the CO2 retention has crossed 48 hours, it will show a chronic phenomenon. For every 10 millimeters increase in carb in PSCO2, for a chronic respiratory acidosis, the bicarbonate will rise by 4 millimoles per liter. For example, if somebody's CO2 is 80, so the expected bicarb for that patient will be 80 minus 40 is 40. 40 by 10 is 4. 4 into 4 is 16. So you add 24 plus 16, the patient's bicarb should be 40. If this patient has a bicarb of 30, which is again above the normal of 24, but still lower than what is expected by the compensation, this patient is considered to have a metabolic acidosis, despite the fact that the bicarb is 30. So we should never comment on the ABG just by looking at the CO2 or the bicarb. So the learning point is you always try to start interpreting an ABG by looking at the pH.